Reactive Props Destructure is the highlight feature of View 3.5. It allows you to destructure props while maintaining their reactivity. Previously in Vue.js, destructuring props would cause them to lose reactivity. Now they remain reactive, allowing you to use them with built-in functions like watch and compute it. But with watch, you have to wrap the prop in a function. That's because the destructure prop variable will be automatically compiled to something like this for runtime. So if you didn't wrap this in a function, the watch would be watching a property of the props, which would be a static value. It would not be reactive. But if you wrap it in a function, watch will be able to assess the value of this prop by running the function to get the prop's current value. Reactive props destructure improves developer experience by eliminating the need to prefix props with props dot in the script section. Additionally, you can set the default value for a prop like this, so you won't need to rely on with defaults to set the default values for props. That's it for reactive prop destructure from view 3.5. If you want to learn more about this feature, you can check out the documentation for that. If you work with SSR, you have probably seen a warning like this. This happens when the server side rendered HTML and the client side rendered HTML from hydration are different. The classic example is when you are rendering time related data like a timestamp, which changes in a split second. But now in view 3.5, you can opt out from the hydration mismatch warning if your app is just designed that way and it's not a sign of a bug in your code. Just add the data allow mismatch attribute to the element containing the mismatched content. But we should narrow the scope to the specific part that is causing the mismatch. In this case, it's the timestamp. We can create a span for that and set the data allow mismatch attribute just for the span. Now the hydration mismatch is still there, but you will not see the warning. So this feature is basically about removing warning messages. It's not about what your app can do. When you're not sure what's causing a hydration mismatch, you'll need to debug it. A good approach is to compare the client-side HTML and the server-side HTML. For demonstration, I'm going to remove this. And we see the hydration mismatch warning again. This is the server-side rendered HTML. And you can get the server-side HTML from the Sources tab. This is the server-side rendered HTML. By comparing these two HTML versions and identifying the differences, you can pinpoint where the hydration mismatch occurs. That's it for data allow mismatch from view 3.5. If you want to learn more about this feature, you can check out the documentation for that. Lazy hydration has been implemented as part of Vue's async component API. So before we get to lazy hydration, let's take a look at async component. An async component enables lazy hydration, meaning the component's code is downloaded from the server only when needed for rendering. This improves initial page load times by reducing the amount of code that must be loaded upfront. To create an async component, we have to first create a regular component. I'm going to paste some code for a very simple component here. Next, create another component without the .view extension. This is just a TypeScript file. We're going to create an async component here. We have to import the define async function. And then export a component created using this function. This function takes an options object. We have to set the loader option to use the regular component that we just created. We have to use the import function to dynamically import the component. This creates an async component that lazy loads the original component, essentially acting as a wrapper around it. When we want to use this component, we just need to import and use it just like other components. 
Since I'm demoing this in a Nux.js app, importing the component is optional. Nux.js will auto-import any component stored in the components folder. The reason why I'm using Nux.js instead of just Vue.js is because it's easier to demo SSR-related features with a Nux.js app. Run the app and you'll see the original component being rendered. That covers async components and lazy loading. Next, let's explore lazy hydration. Hydration is a client-side step in server-side rendering. First, the component is rendered on the server to produce the HTML. Then, when both the HTML and the component code reach the client side, the component renders again to become fully interactive. This second client side rendering is called hydration. Lazy hydration is basically delaying this hydration step. This could be a good idea if the hydration process is making the initial load of the page slow. All you have to do is to import a hydration strategy such as hydrate on interaction and use it with the hydrate option in the async component. There are also a few other built-in strategies such as hydrate on visible, hydrate on idle, and hydrate on media query. We're using the hydrate on interaction strategy here. This means this component will only start hydration when it's being interacted with. With this strategy, we can choose which interactive event should trigger the hydration. For example, a click event or a mouse over event. To test this, let's put a console log message in the original component. When this page is loaded, we'll see the console log message from the first rendering on the server side. We don't see the client side message here because this component hasn't been hydrated yet. Let's mouse over the component. This will trigger the hydration for the async component. And you'll see the client side message. That's it for lazy hydration from Vue 3.5. If you want to learn more about async component and lazy hydration, you can check out our visual documentation. A template ref is a ref that connects to an element and allows you to manipulate the underlying HTML element using the DOM API. This is generally not recommended in reactive programming, but there are situations where you might need to rely on using a template ref. For instance, if you want a text box to be focused on when the component is mounted, and you can access the value of the ref to get the HTML element and call focus on that. As you can see, the text box is being focused on. Now in view 3.5, we get a dedicated composable just for that. Unlike the traditional approach of initializing with null, we now provide a key that maps the ref to the element. This same key must be used in the element's ref attribute. With this new composable, we get type support without needing to manually specify the type of the element. If you want to learn more about template ref, you can check out the documentation for that.